so plate tectonic theory is all about the idea that the surface of the earth or our lithosphere or crust is divided into individual hard continuous plates or continuous like shells and we can think about the whole lithosphere or the crust as like the egg shell around the earth it's brittle it's hard it breaks easily when we're talking yeah, i know rock seems really solid but really when we're talking about the earth itself pushing stuff around yeah the the crust is very brittle um, and these pieces are called plates and these are huge these are continent size or bigger and this is important to know <clears throat> because we're not talking about continents moving around independently of other continents or of independently of the oceans through the oceans right that's not what's happening each plate is made up of continental rock and oceanic crust, and we'll see that. So hopefully from um, <clears throat> chapter one, where we went through the process of science and the process of discovery, going from our old continental drift idea to our new modern plate tectonic theory, hopefully we kind of have an idea that uh, we're, we're talking about um, things that are much bigger than continents and we're not talking about like Australia moving around here and North America doing this. We're talking about at least half of that plate, in some cases much more, is also oceanic plate. So let me uh, take a, I don't know if I could draw here with a pen, but anyway, um, with our picture here, we have a continental plate and the edge of it, oh, actually, here we go. I knew that was somewhere. The western edge of our plate, hey, this is like North America, so I'm just going to put NA for North America. And so we're looking over here on the west coast at like California, um, where we have a subduction zone. And yeah, we've got other things going on. There's actually a divergent plate boundary and most famously a transform plate boundary, the San Andreas Fault uh, in California. But the whole west coast really is mostly a big subduction zone. So we have a uh, where it's a place where some oceanic crust, a piece of the Pacific, or something close to the Pacific plate, is diving down below the North American continental crust, okay? And then we are over here, so let's say, oh, right about here, we're in Kentucky. Um, this would be like something like Mount St. Helens, so that could be like, uh, well, Oregon, I know this isn't perfect, but that's okay. Kentucky, and then as we get over here, we're getting into the Carolinas, North and South Carolina. You know, we're getting into the East Coast, all the way up into New England and uh, parts of Canada. And that's where the continent ends. And we have not a steep, rocky cliff like we have out West. But we have a nice, gentle, it's much more gentle than this, um, very gentle continental slope going down to the sea because there is no subduction zone and there hasn't been one in a very very long time though there has repeatedly and we'll see we'll talk about that later on in the semester um but so what's going on is we don't have the edge of the plate we just have the edge of the continent so this is continuing and the very edge of the north american plate is all the way out to the mid-atlantic ridge right here and iceland is here you know somewhere as well on the mid-atlantic ridge so the north american plate is all between my kind of parentheses right here. So see, we're not just talking about the continents. The plate itself has a whole lot of oceanic crust. There's no uh, plate on the planet that just has one type of crust, except one. And actually, there's a few, but the only one they have on them is oceanic crust. There's no continent that's independent from the oceans around it, okay? And then as we get over here, well, again, Mid-Atlantic Ridge, and this would be like Europe, right? So Europe is also, you know, so if you wanna put your hand on North American, on the North American plate and your hand on the European plate, you sure can, and you could do that. It's a place called the Sulfra Rift in Iceland, where you can snorkel or scuba dive down into this rift and literally have your hand on these two plates. Of course, you're many miles and miles and miles, thousands, maybe hundreds at least of miles, away from the North American continent and the European continent, but that's where the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is dividing the two tectonic plates, okay? So that's an important thing to get. We're not talking about continents independently going around. Every tectonic plate has both oceanic and continental crust on it, or at least a lot of oceanic crust. So the plates are moving around and wherever there is rock deformation, like mountain building, uh, volcanism, earthquakes,
that is going to be pretty much confined to the boundary. So where are these big tectonic plates, whether the edge is the oceanic crust or the edge is the continental crust, whatever, they're running into each other, they're sliding past one another, they're moving away from one another. That's where all the action is happening with mountains being formed and have been formed throughout Earth history. Uh, earthquakes, happening right now uh, or in throughout history and also volcanoes. So that's why today, I know it's taken me a while to get to this point, we're talking about plate tectonic boundaries. So um, I like this map a lot because we're used to seeing maps where like the oceans are blue, continents are like tan or green or whatever, and we're like, oh, that's the difference between the continent and the ocean. Well, we're getting to the point where, okay, we know that the that what makes up the oceanic crust is basalt, right? It's heavier, denser elements, minerals, those ferromagnesian silicates. I promise that's gonna come back. Uh, we're gonna keep talking about those. those. The oceanic crust then is very dense, right? It sits pretty low. The continental crust is made up of granite, which again is um, continental, well, it, is, uh, it contains mostly non-ferromagnesian silicates. So as much lighter, a little bit lighter weight, it's still rock, right? It's not that uh, light. Um, so I'm sorry, my microphone might help a bit. Okay. <clears throat> so we're dealing with uh, the, kind of the difference between oceanic crust and continental crust as far as their densities and how they interact with one another when they collide together. Other than that, though, we're really just thinking about one plate as opposed to another plate. So in lab this week, you guys are looking at, uh, okay, well, what plate is uh, North America on, for instance? Well, not surprisingly, it's called the North American plate. What plate is, um, uh, I don't know what the other questions are, but what plate is uh, contacting the uh, South American plate and causing the Andes Mountains? Well, that would be over here. That's the Nazca plate that's subducting down here and so on. So we're going to stop thinking about continents like, uh, you know, Europe or Asia or North America or Africa and start thinking much bigger and much deeper down into that uh, lithosphere and into the asthenosphere. So we're thinking about tectonic plates, which are much bigger. Uh, one of the biggest on Earth is the Pacific plate, which, as you can tell here, has no continent on it at all. Now, it does have a little bit of land, but that land is not continental crust. It forms from a very special process that we'll get into uh, a little bit later. And this is Hawaii. Does anybody know that Hawaii is this far away from North and from you know the, the the rest of North America? Right? It's way out there. It's it's one of the most isolated mountain or uh, most isolated islands on Earth. Is in the middle of the Pacific Plate. How do we get volcanoes in the middle of a plate? Because as we can see, most of our volcanoes, like the Andes the Mount St. Helens, uh, all the Cascades here, uh, the, the Rockies, um, uh, shoot, whatever's going on in Europe, I know they kind of cut it up here, but most of our mountain systems and most of our volcanoes are at the edges of plates, which they should be, because that's where the interactions are taking place. Um, but there's a few that are in the middle, that's a very special situation we'll get in at the end of today's talk. So um, I like this map a lot then because not only does it really show you the difference from one plate to the other and really focus on the boundaries, but it's also showing you what's happening at the boundaries. So these are the three different kinds of plate tectonic boundaries we're talking about today. This, there are divergent where, here's a good example, this is the East Pacific rise down here where we could be talking about the Mid-Atlantic Ridge where we have plates moving away from one another. And while these start, on land, like we'll talk about the East African Rift Valley, spreading ridges always start on land. While they start on land, it always becomes oceanic crust. And we'll talk about why in a, in a second. So those red arrows are referring to divergent plate boundaries where plates are moving apart and we're creating new crust. We're creating new oceanic crust. This is how oceans form. Remember, oceans are younger than continents. There's no place on the planet where the oceanic crust is older than about 180 or so million years old. And that's nothing compared to how old the continental rock is. That's because the oceanic crust recycles. So it's being created at our spreading ridges. Here's our other place in blue, the blue arrows here, it's being destroyed. So along the blue arrows, in most places you have subduction zones where oceanic crust is diving down 
and being swallowed up and remelted and recreated, reformed eventually in subduction zones. So these are also going to be our deep sea trenches. Um, like here is uh, one of these is the Marianas Trench. I believe it's this one is the Marianas Trench. Uh, we have the Japanese islands also forming at a big subduction zone. Um, none of these islands, Indonesia, the Philippines, none of these would exist if it wasn't for subduction zones and the volcanoes that occur from them. Even if they are very devastating volcanoes, well, they have created these islands. Um, and then we have places where the oceanic crust dives down under a continent, and that's going to create mountains and volcanoes on the edge of a continent. And the Cascade Range of North America and the Andes of South America are perfect examples. And then finally, transform plate boundaries. And these are kind of, um, uh, these don't create crust. They don't destroy crust. Uh, they're really just places where the crust is just, you know, relieving a little bit of stress, right? We all have to relieve a little bit of stress every now and then. And that's what transform plate boundaries are doing. They're just sliding past one another. And we have a whole bunch of teeny tiny ones all over, usually uh, bisecting, not bisecting, but usually just kind of perpendicular to spreading ridges, like I'm kind of showing stitches. Um, if we can think about a spreading ridge, like the seam of a baseball, wrapping around the earth, which they kind of do, uh, transform plate boundaries are kind of the stitches that kind of cut across, kind of allow some stress to be released because I hope everybody understands this, the earth is more or less spherical. It's kind of round, it's not flat. And because it's kind of round, we need places where the rocks are kind of, you know, some stress needs to be released there. It can't just be a straight moving apart. So that's what transform plate boundaries do. Now, where they are, uh, famous and we hear about them a lot is when they are on land and they are responsible for some big earthquakes. So the San Andreas Fault here in California is a good example of that. There's others, the Caribbean, uh, this is the, um, was it, uh, uh, Enriquillo Plantain Garden Fault. Sorry, I had to think for a second. I, th I think that's it. Um, but this is uh, the fault that was responsible for Haiti's a devastating earthquake in 2010. Um, another place where we have devastating earthquakes related to, uh, actually I don't think I'm really seeing it, is uh, Turkey. They don't really have that, um, anyway, uh, yeah, Turkey has a big transform plate boundary, the North Anatolian Fault. Uh, so where these transform plate boundaries occur on land, we have some, some of the biggest earthquakes uh, and some of the most devastating because they're on land, so people are there. If all these little ones go off in the middle of the ocean, well, who cares, you know? So anyway, those are the three major kinds of plate boundaries. <clears throat> and I'll get into more detail with all of those. More detail than you'd probably like, but that's okay. That's, you know, that's what I'm here for. Um, so I like this image too, kind of going back to our classic, you know, oh, I see continents, I see oceans, you know, but the red is showing us the plate boundaries again. So the red is delineating each of those major plates. And the uh, little symbols here, the little triangle, those are little teeth, those represent subduction zones. Um, we have some spreading ridges and we have hot spots, which we'll talk about as well. Um, they don't really bother showing the transform plate boundaries except for these little kinks that cut across every now and then. But they're also showing the direction of movement with those little arrows. And uh, the numbers are representing in centimeters, I'll just put CM there so we remember that, in centimeters, the annual amount of movement. That's a lot. So down here, and red may not be the best color because there's already red, but anyway, I'll circle this. This is the East Pacific rise, uh, some of the fastest moving rock on earth. And so we're moving apart at a rate of about, you know, 18 centimeters a year. This is about six inches a year. So there's, so this piece of oceanic crust moves apart from one another at a rate of about six inches every single year. You know, after a hundred years, that's, you know, that's 600 inches, which I don't offhand know how many feet, but you know, that's a lot. And you build that up over millions of years. This is how plates move around. This is how continental drift occurs. Oceans are the engine that are shoving all this stuff around. So that's where the action's happening. At subduction zones, so on the other end of this, and there's a lot of reasons why this rate wouldn't be the same, um, but all the way on the other edge of that, and that's kind of the direction that the 
Pacific Plate is heading in. We have subduction of the western edge of the Pacific Plate under Japan, under the Marianas Islands, under the Philippines, under the Tonga Islands here. Uh, we have, uh, so that's being driven there, being pulled down, but it's really being pushed we think uh, there's actually some um, some things we don't know here about the bigger forces causing all this to occur. That's okay, um, but anyway, uh, it's largely being pushed by the spreading ridge. So we're going to start out today talking about the spreading ridges or divergent plate boundaries because uh, this is kind of where the action happens. Subduction zones seem to kind of be a result of that uh, spreading action, but it's the spreading that shoves these plates around, again, whether they're oceanic or continental. Okay, so <clears throat> three kinds of plate boundaries, and I like this image because it has a nice cartoony, you know, kind of shows what's going on, but we're also looking at um, uh, several different terms for these too. So divergent means that these plates are diverging apart from one another, so moving apart, right? Uh, we can call this, a, often I'll call it a spreading ridge. Uh, if this is happening in the oceans, which it often is, we call it a mid-ocean ridge. Mid-ocean, why are they right in the middle of the ocean? Well, because these are where the oceanic crust is produced. And generally, it produces kind of about the same amount of oceanic crust on one side as the other side. So they end up being in the middle of an ocean. This is how oceans form in the first place. And we'll see the formation of an ocean in a little bit. Okay, and then we'll talk about convergent plate boundaries. There are several different kinds here. Um, we could be talking about an oceanic plate colliding with an oceanic plate. That'll create a subduction zone. We could be talking about an oceanic plate colliding with a continental plate. That'll definitely create a subduction zone, right? You know that the oceanic crust is heavier, it's denser, it's gonna sink, continental crust rides up above. And we also have, um, they don't really show it here. Uh, we, well, we'll see that in a little bit. Continental collision where continents can converge together and then we don't get subduction. We get something else happening entirely. And then finally, transform plate boundaries. Uh, so places where the plate is, uh, or the crust is neither created nor destroyed. They're just moving past one another, usually just, uh, you know, just uh, releasing a little bit of stress from the surrounding action related to convergent or divergent plate boundaries. But again, when they occur on land, that's where we can have some big earthquakes. All three of these, by the way, create earthquakes. Um, really only divergent, convergent create volcanoes and not really all the time either. Uh, not always the volcanoes that, that we think of. Okay. Um, another thing to mention here, uh, I don't know if it's obvious from these little cartoony images, but divergent plate boundaries or these mid-ocean ridges tend to be some of the shallower places in the ocean. The mid-Atlantic ridge comes up about halfway to the surface of the sea from the surrounding seafloor. Whereas with convergent plate boundaries or at least subduction zones where you have an oceanic plate diving down below a either oceanic or continental plate, uh, you have some of the deepest parts of the sea. These are the trenches. The Marianas Trench, deepest part of the ocean, and the reason why is because the crust that is diving down is about 180 million years old. So it is cold, it's dense, it's heavy, it's, it's sinking way down below another oceanic plate, and the whole thing's just being pulled deep, deep, deep down into the earth and uh, ends up being the deepest part of our oceanic crust. Other subduction zones, you know, uh, won't necessarily be deep like that. I mean, but they're all trenches. They all, they all do create trenches. 